Hi everyone and welcome. This is an introduction to U-Boot. U-Boot is a primary bootloader used in embedded devices, originally designed for PowerPC. It is now available for a number of architectures, including this one listed over here. Initially loaded by ROM or the BIOS, U-Boot can work on very limited amount of resources, as I can be split into stages. The SPL, which is a stripped down version of U-Boot, is loaded first to perform basic hardware configuration in order to start the full version of U-Boot. It comes with a command line which users can use to boot a particular kernel, manipulate device trees, download files, work with environmental variables, and much more. Requires users to specify the memory addresses to use for copying a RAM disk, a kernel device tree, and more, and for jumping to the kernel. Regardless whether the user is using a physical board or an emulator, the very first step is getting U-Boot up and running, so that its console can be accessed to launch commands to load the kernel. This video is just an introduction to U-Boot as the kernel has not been built yet. Therefore, next classes will need to cover this topic again. As U-Boot can be automated, users do not need to type these commands every time they start a physical virtual board. Building U-Boot, the very first thing you need to do is cloning the repository. Then you need to jump into the U-Boot directory. And then you need to switch to the branch that you want to build. On Linux, you might get the list of available branches by pressing Tab right after the git checkout command. I will use the following. You can use a different one. The directory configs contains all available configurations. Choose the one that matches your platform, but make sure you read the readme file first. Also, if you are using a physical board, you might want to read the readme file that comes with your board. Getting everything ready for the build and here we are setting up all the environmental variables. Bear in mind that your values might be different. And now we can start building, making sure that we are pointing at the correct configuration file. The one in red is the one that I'm using, and you need to find the one that matches your platform. All options are in the configs directory. Now the steps are going to create the uboot and uboot.bin files in the uboot directory. More in particular, these are the files you should expect to find, although this list might change. U-Boot, executable file in a format used with debuggers. U-Boot.bin, executable that runs on the device. U-Boot.image, like the previous one but with other, to be added to a running copy of U-Boot. SREC, executable in Motorola S record format, to be used over serial connections. MLO, secondary program loader, built only if needed. Now, if you are planning to use QEMU, those are the commands that you're going to launch to test 
you build. Okay. Now I'm here. Guess I can just copy paste. No, I might tap it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, system on. And then I specify the virtual machine I'm using. No graphic. Then no reboot. Okay, as you can see, we got the prompt from you boot. Now I can type help if I want. And that's the list of the commands that you boot is allow me to launch, right? For example, I can do print env, which is going to give me the environmental variables and how they are set. As you can see, that's my architecture, the board name, and now I can reset. And again, this is just what I've just done, right? U-boot and physical boards. To make the U-boot files accessible to the board, choose any support such as SD cards, USB mass storage, or serial interfaces to store the code which is going to be read by the ROM, and create two partitions like the following ones. The first partition is for the bootloader itself, while the second one is for the root file system. Copy the MLO if required and the U-boot image to the boot partition. Let's say you are using an external USB SD reader mapped as DevTTYSB0. You could install the bootloader using the following command. Powering the board up, you should be able to see the U-boot prompt on the serial console. U-boot and make image. Make image is used to create images for U-boot which can contain Linux kernel, root file system, firmware, device tree blob and much more. Images can be either legacy and the first line of code is going to create an image legacy mode for ARM processor or you can create current fit images using the second line of code and that's an example for PowerPC platform. And now we are going to have the board loading the file that we just dropped. And actually you could use the same procedure for virtual board as well. Now the following command is used to load files from FAT partitions. And that one is the prompt of the board. FAT load is actually a command that is offered by U-boot. And that's the explanation. Make sure that the um, RAM area into which you're going to load the file is actually empty.
Also, you can load files over a network. First thing, you will need to set up your own IP address. However, if you are running a DHCP server, you might not need that step. Again, you will need to set up the address of the server though. And then, last line, TFTP boot is going to retrieve the file, storing the file into the RAM address that you are specifying. Again, make sure that the address is empty. And now the NAND is ready to be programmed. Let's use some error correction coding in order to prevent corruption. Double check the documentation of the board. And next, NAND is cleared. So the very first line of code is going to set up the uh, error correction coding. And the next line is going to clear a section or erase a section of the NAND because we are getting ready to write something into the NAND. Kernel can now be written into the flash. And that's the last line of code. NAND write those numbers. So, what this last line of code does, so basically, this line of code takes the image stored at that location over there, which we just loaded before, right? And writes that number of bytes to the NAND at the address specified by the green number. Right? And also, as you can write, you can also read from the NAND, which we're going to see now. Similarly, bytes can be retrieved from NAND, running the following command, which is pretty similar. Again, you're using the uh, U-boot prompt. Now, this command reads that number of bytes from the, that offset, from beginning of NAND, storing them into RAM address that number, which is the very first number you provide. And now you have enough information to start any kernel stored into memory. At this stage, the kernel has not been built yet. Therefore, next classes will need to cover the booting step again. A kernel stored into memory can be started using the following. Again, as you can see, we are still using the U-boot prompt and we are still providing U-boot with memory addresses. Now, U-boot automation. To create U-boot script, do the following. Store all commands into a text file. I'm assuming you're using a Linux machine or something similar. Convert the text file into a U-boot image using MK image. Download the file using TFTP on the target machine using the procedure that we've seen already. Use source to execute the script. You can also create a variable with setemd which will contain all commands. Next, execute the variable using the run command. Falcon mode. So far, the boot procedure has been doing this. So ROM, SPL, U-boot bin and then finally kernel. U-boot Falcon mode makes the SPL loading the kernel, removing the U-boot bin, speeding the whole process up.
Enabling this configuration is not easy, as it might require the user to build U-Boot after having modified a large number of properties stored into several configuration files. And that will be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed my class. Thank you very much.